Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm sharing 13 of my favorite Valentine's Day DIYs. Since this is a combination of a few of my videos together to form one mega video, they are labeled a little bit out of order, so just keep that in mind while you're watching. I really hope that you enjoy. Now let's go ahead and get right into it. For the first DIY today, I'm gonna to be using one of the square signs from Dollar Tree. I did get this back in the fall, as to why this says happy fall. I just really liked the shape of this sign and the frame around the sign. I'm gonna be just removing the backing to this piece and then I'm just gonna save that for a future project. And then I'm also gonna be removing the beads that are on the top of the sign because I'm not using them for this project and I will save the beads for a future project. Next, I'm painting the entire frame with my Waverly chalk paint in the color Plaster. I did do two different coats of this paint, and then I'm also using this Grapevine Heart. This is from Dollar Tree last year, and then these little button stickers also from Dollar Tree. And after my frame was all dry, I decided that I wanted to place these button stickers on the front of the frame, so I just started pressing them on. I wish I would have applied them before I painted the frame, but I didn't decide that I wanted to use them until after the fact. So it would have been a little bit easier to put them on and then paint the frame, but that's not how things <laughs> worked out for me. So I'm just putting them around the entire frame and then once I have them all stuck on, then I'm just using that same Waverly paint and plaster. And I did do two coats over top of all of the buttons just to make sure that they were nice and covered up because obviously I don't want the blue color for this project. Then once they were all dry, I took some of my Java color chalk paint from Folk Art on a paintbrush and I just dry brushed this color over top of all of those sticker buttons and then around all of the sides of the frame so that it'll give it a really nice rustic distressed look. Next I'm using seven of these larger popsicle sticks from Dollar Tree and I took one of them and I just made sure that I measured it down to size so that it will fit on the inside of the back of my frame and to cut them down I just used some of my scissors and cut the two round edges off of the stick and then I use that piece as a guide to finish cutting the rest of the six popsicle sticks down to size. Once I had all of them cut then I painted all seven of them with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and I only did one quick coat on just the front side that I'm going to be using for each stick. Once that paint was all dry, I then used some of my Java colored paint and I dry brushed that around all of the edges of my popsicle sticks to make them look old and distressed. Then it was time to start attaching all of my popsicle sticks on the inside of the back of my frame. To do that, I just placed hot glue on each end of my popsicle sticks and then just pressed them into the back of the frame. And I did have it going with the plaster color towards the front, obviously, because that's gonna be the front of my frame. And I continued to do that for all seven of my sticks. Then I'm gonna be using some of these really small pink flowers from this floral stem that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. And I thought this would be perfect to place these on my wreath. So I just cut the little flowers off of their stems and then used hot glue to attach them to each side of my grapevine wreath. And I left a space at the very top of the heart because I am going to be placing a bow up there and I did not want flowers up there. So I'm just continuing to do this over and over again until I have all of my flowers glued onto my wreath. Next I cut two pieces of jute and I'm just creating a really simple bow with this and just cutting the tail ends to the length that I want and then hot gluing that bow right in the center of my heart on the little um, part that comes down. And then for the very last step I'm using hot glue on the back side of my mini grapevine heart wreath and then just pressing that down into the center of my frame. And this is my framed heart wreath all finished. I really love how this one turned out. It was super easy to do and I'm just loving all of the tones of this one put together. Moving right on into DIY number two. For this one I'm using one of these mini wooden candlesticks from Hobby Lobby. These do come in I believe a pack of four but I'm only using one of these for today's project. And I'm first starting by using a really small paintbrush and I'm painting on this wood tint from Folk Art in the color Walnut. 
I did this in small sections. I would just uh, paint on the stain or wood tint and then I would take an old cloth and then just wipe away the excess tint. And I continued to do this until I had the entire wood candlestick all stained. For this project, I'm also using this mini wooden house that says Hello Spring. This is from the Target Dollar Spot last year, and I just really don't think I'm ever going to use it, so I decided to make it over. I first started by just peeling off that dollar sticker off of the back, and then I painted the entire house with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. I did do two different coats of this paint. And I'm also using this unfinished wood heart. This did come from Dollar Tree this year in one of their wooden heart packs. And I'm using the unfinished one. They did have some that were painted, but I wanted mine to be stained. So I'm using that same folk art wood tint in the color Walnut. Just painted it on with my same small brush and then just wiped away the excess stain with my old towel. I'm also using another unfinished wood heart from that same heart pack, but this one is just a little bit smaller than the one that I stained. And for this one, I'm painting it in the color Vintage Victorian from Folk Art. And then once that was all dry, it was time to start assembling everything. So I hot glued my stained heart on the front of my house, and then I hot glued my pink heart right on top of the larger stained heart. Then I thought it would be really cute to add some dew around the front of the house and around those two hearts that I attach. So I just wrap the dew around about three times randomly and then to secure the dew I use some hot glue along the back side of the house. And then for the very last step I just needed to add my house to my candlestick so I used some hot glue on the top of the candlestick and then attached that to the bottom center of my house. And actually there's one more step. I did want to add a little bit of detail around the house and just make it pop around the edges. So I used some of my Java colored paint from Folk Art and just very lightly dry brushed that around all of the edges of my house. And this is what it looks like all finished. It turned out super cute. Again, another really easy project and I think it would look really good on either a shelf or a tiered tray. Next is a DIY number three, and for this one I'm going to be using this small glass bottle from Hobby Lobby. And then the first thing I'm going to be doing to the bottle is painting on matte Mod Podge. I've heard that if you paint Mod Podge on glass before painting it, it helps the paint from chipping away. So I'm going to be trying that method out today. And once the Mod Podge was dry, or at least I thought it was dry, I then painted on the Waverly paint in the color Plaster, and I did do two coats of that paint. Now I don't think I let my Mod Podge dry completely because my paint started making like a crackling effect which I ended up liking um, in the long run so I did not fix it but I'm not sure if maybe I did something wrong or if I just didn't wait for the Mod Podge to dry fully. So since I liked the crackle look I did think that maybe if I added some of the Java colored paint over it it would make some of those cracks pop and I am going to be having this look a little bit distressed so it kind of went with the look I was going for anyways and I did focus some of that paint on the edges of the bottles and then as well as the very top of the bottle. Next I'm using these four wooden letter beads. Um, these ones I think I picked up at Michael's but you can pretty much get these at any craft store. I'm using two X's and two O's and I'm stringing them so that they say XOXO onto a piece of a jute. I did tie a knot on the end of the jute so that my beads would stay in place. Once I have them all strung on, I'm just cutting off the excess jute and then I'm going to be wrapping it around the very top of my bottle and then tying that in a knot so that it stays secure on the top of my bottle. I'm then adding some of these greenery stems from Hobby Lobby inside of my bottle and then I'm also adding some of these little heart picks. These were from Dollar Tree this year and I just randomly placed them in between all of the greenery. And this is the project all finished. Only a few steps for this one. It's super easy and another great project for a shelf or tiered tray. Now for the fourth and final DIY today, I am going to be using one of these unfinished wood hearts from Dollar Tree. I did pick this one up last year, so I'm not sure if they have them again this year. And then the first thing that I'm doing is removing the jute hanger at the top of the heart so that it's a little bit easier for me to paint my heart. 
Once I have that removed, I'm going to be using my Folk Art Wood Tint in the color Walnut and I'm using a paintbrush to apply it to one of the slats on the side. And then once I have it all painted on, I am going to be using an old cloth to wipe away any excess tint. And as you can see here, I am painting the tint on the wood pieces that are in between my wood slats as well. After I had all of the extra wood tint wiped away, then I moved on and started painting the next slat of my heart. And for this one, I'm using my Folk Art paint in the color Vintage Victorian. And I did do two coats of this paint since it was a little bit more sheer. And then once I had that all painted on, I did wait for it to dry before I moved on to the next portion. It's because I'm using that wood tint again in between the wood slats. I wanted to make sure that that paint was dry so they didn't mix together. And then before I started painting any more pieces, I wanted to make sure I had my wood tint applied to all of the wood pieces in between my slats. So once I had that on, I decided I was just gonna go ahead and stain the other end of my heart. I used that same walnut color. Again, wiped away the excess. And then once that was all finished, for the last slat here in the middle, I'm using my Waverly paint in the color plaster. Once all of my paint and wood tint dried, I'm then taking this piece of burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree and I'm cutting it down to where I can wrap it around just the two painted slats in the middle. And then I'm cutting it down so that it's a little bit thinner as well. And then fraying out all of the edges so that it looks a little bit more rustic. Once I have that done, I'm then wrapping that piece of burlap through the slats and then I'm going to be hot gluing the two ends of that burlap ribbon along the back side of my heart. Now I'm going to be using some of these little white flowers that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. I am just picking them right off their stems and then I'm going to be cutting the flowers so that they are just one flower. I think it's a little bit easier to work with them this way. And then I'm placing the hot glue right on the stem and then just pulling up the burlap and placing the flower underneath. I continued to do this numerous times until I had flowers all the way across the burlap. Then I also added some of these other greenery pieces that I also got from Hobby Lobby. I just made them really small and then I hot glued each one of them in between all of my white flowers. I think they added a lot more dimension and texture to my piece. Then I'm going to be using this Love Wooden Cutout. This is from Joanne Fabrics and I'm painting it with my Waverly Paint in plaster. Once that was all painted and before I start gluing on this Love Word, I did want to add a hanger back onto my piece. So I used two pieces of chew and I just strung them through the very top holes that were already pre-drilled into my heart and just tied those to the length that I wanted my hanger to be. Then for the last step in this project, I'm using some hot glue on the back side of my Love Word cutout and just gluing that right over top of the burlap. This is what my Love Wooden Heart Wreath looks like all finished. I did end up placing this in the center of a wreath I already have and I really love the look of it. For the first DIY today, I'm going to be using this wooden piece. This originally had unfinished wood icons in it, and I thought that this would actually be really good for a project, so I kept it. The first thing I'm going to be doing to it is painting on some of my folk art wood tint in the color Walnut. I like painting it on in small sections because I can get in all of the little wooden grooves this way. And then once I have it all painted on, then I just wipe away the excess with an old rag. And I continued to do this for all of the outside edges, the front edges, and then I also stained the back side as well. And then once that was all stained for the inside for like little areas, I painted those with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. And I just did one quick coat of that paint. Next, I'm using these three unfinished wood letters. I'm using the letters L, V, and E. And these ones are from Joanne Fabrics. And I'm painting all of them with my folk art paint in the color rich black. And then instead of using an O, I'm using this unfinished wooden heart. This one is from Dollar Tree. And I'm painting it with my folk art paint in the color Imperial. 
Then once all of my paints have dried, I'm just placing all of my letters and my heart inside of my piece just to get them all centered. And then once I have them where I want them to be, I'm just hot gluing each one of them down. Then for the very last step, I'm gonna be using some of this white cotton cord from Hobby Lobby, and I'm tying a knot on one end, and then I'm just measuring to see how long I want it to be cutting it down to size and then making a knot on the other end and then just hot gluing those two ends on the back side of this piece. And this is what the love piece looks like all finished. It was super easy to do and I was able to create it using items I already had in my craft stash and I ended up placing it on one of my tables. Now for DIY number two. For this one, I'm using this small wood piece from Michaels. It is from the Art Minds brand that they carry at Michaels. And the first thing I'm gonna be doing to this piece is painting on that same wood tint that I used in my last DIY. It is from Folk Art and I'm using the color Walnut. I do like to work in smaller sections. I think that is a little bit less messy this way. Once I have it painted on, then I'm just using an old rag to wipe away the excess and I did stain this entire piece. Then I'm gonna be using these three felt roses. These I picked up from Dollar General last year and they do have a little sticker on the bottom side of them, but I'm not gonna be using that, so I'm just peeling the stickers off. Then I'm using these three wooden mini flower pots. These are from Hobby Lobby. I believe they come in a pack of four, but I'm just gonna be using three of them today. And I'm painting all three of them in the Waverly paint in the color plaster. After all of my paint was dried, then I'm taking all three of my pots and placing them inside of my stained piece. I wanted to make sure that I had them all centered before I actually started attaching them. And to attach them, I'm using a little bit of hot glue on the bottom of each pot and then just placing them back into place inside of my wood piece. Then it was time for me to start attaching all of my roses. Again, I just placed them on my pots, make sure that they were exactly how I wanted them to be before I started using hot glue to attach them to the tops of my pots. For this project, I'm using two Scrabble letter tiles, one with an I and one with a U, and then also a mini wooden heart from Dollar Tree, and then I'm painting the heart with my Imperial Color chalk paint. Then I attached the eye above my first rose using some hot glue. Before I started to attach the heart above my second rose, I decided it needed a little bit of a white around the edges. I thought it would just make the heart pop a little bit more. So I'm just dry brushing the plaster color from Waverly around the entire outside of the heart and then a little bit on the front of the heart as well. And then once I had it all painted, I just attached that above the second rose with some hot glue. And then the same thing for the U tile. And then to add a little bit of detail to my pots, I took a little bit of my Java colored paint from Bulk Art and I just very lightly painted that around the underneath lip of my pots just to give them a little bit more detail. This is what my piece looks like all finished. It was really easy to do and I think it is super cute. Would be perfect on a tabletop like I have here or even maybe on a shelf or tiered tray. Moving right along into DIY number three, for this one I'm using this piece from Dollar Tree. It's really cute, but the paper on the front of it was already peeling up, so I just peeled off what I could and it was actually glued really good in the middle. I tried using some heat to get the glue off, but it was on there. So I just sanded away what I could and then I just painted right over it. I did start thinking that I was gonna do this piece white but then once I had it all painted I changed my mind so I just painted right over it with my imperial color paint from Folk Art and I did two coats of this paint and then while the paint was drying I went ahead and started painting all of my letters that I'm going to be using. These wood letters are from Joanne Fabrics and I'm spelling out the word Valentine with them and I painted all of the letters with the plaster color paint from Waverly. Once the paint was all dry on my letters, then I started placing them down on my red piece just to get an idea of where I want them to be and get them all centered. Once I had them all centered, then I started gluing them down into place using some hot glue. And then to add some detail to this piece, I'm using some of this red and white string from Dollar Tree that I picked up this year. I'm cutting it into 
two strands and then I'm just wrapping those strands above the word Valentine and hot gluing the ends of those strings right to the back side. And you can see here that I did end up laying my piece in some wet white paint. I will touch that up later on. And then I did the same thing with two more pieces of this string. I just put them on the bottom of the word Valentine. And again, I just hot glued the two ends of that string along the back side of my piece. And this is the Valentine tabletop piece all finished. This could not have been an easier project. It only took me a few minutes to create. And what's even better is it only took a few supplies to create it as well. Now for the fourth and final DIY today. For this one, I'm using this square wooden piece from Michaels. Again, this is the Art Minds brand that they carry at Michaels. And just like in a couple of the other projects from today, I'm going to be using my folk art wood tint in the color Walnut. This has been my go-to wood tint or stain lately. I just really love the color and the way that this looks, so I've been using it in a lot of my projects. I'm just painting it on with an old brush, and then I wiped away the excess stain. Then for the inside of this piece, I'm painting it with the Waverly Paint in plaster. And then I'm also using 12 of these mini unfinished wooden hearts from Dollar Tree. These did come in the assorted wood pack that they had last year. And I'm painting all 12 of the hearts with the Imperial Chalk Paint from Folk Art. Once I had all of my hearts painted and the paint has dried, I'm then placing them inside of my wood piece. And I'm doing four hearts across for three rows total. And then I'm just using some hot glue on the back side of each heart to attach them to my piece. And this is the piece all finished. Again, a really easy project that's the perfect accent piece to add to your Valentine's Day decor this year. For DIY number one, I'm gonna be using the sign from Dollar Tree. And the first thing that I needed to do was just peel off the piece that was on the front of the sign since I'm not using it. And then I'm also going to be using some felt roses that I picked up from Dollar General last year. All of the roses did have a little sticker on the bottom of them, but I went ahead and just peeled them all off. And then I started placing my two rose colors inside of my square frame just to see how I wanted to place them before I started attaching them. And I did, like I said, use these two colors, the darker pink and then the lighter pink. Then I decided that I wanted to have the frame of this piece painted, so to paint it I'm using my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and I did do two coats of this paint. Once the paint was dry I then started to attach all of my roses and I did hot glue them down and I just went between the two colors. I do the dark pink first, then the light pink, then the dark pink, then the light pink. And I just continued to do those steps until I had roses completely covering the inside of my square. Next, I'm adding some Spanish moss in between all of my roses. To do that, I would place hot glue in the spaces between the roses and then just press in the Spanish moss using the end of a paintbrush. I continued to do that until I had all of the spaces covered in the moss. Then for the last step, I used my scissors and just trimmed away all of the extra moss. It does look super messy, but in the end, when all of it's trimmed away, it looks beautiful. And this is my rose piece all finished. This was such an easy and budget-friendly project, and I love all of these colors together, and it looks perfect on one of my tables. Now for DIY number two. For this one, I'm using these faux Valentine books from Dollar Tree this year. And the first thing I'm doing is just removing the ribbon from around the books. And they are really cute already, just like they are, but I did wanna make them my own. So I'm just painting them with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster, and I did do two coats of this paint. After that paint was all dry, I did want to add some detail, so I'm taking that rich black color on a paintbrush and just very lightly painting this in all of the grooves of my books and then around all of the outside edges of the books as well. This is just giving it some more detail and adding a little bit of a distressed look to them. I'm also going to be using some unfinished wood letters to spell out the words hugs and kisses. These are, I believe, from Joanne Fabrics. And then the small wooden hearts that I'm using are from Dollar Tree. 
And for all of my letters to spell out hugs and kisses, I am painting them with my folk art chalk paint in the color rich black. Then for all three of my wooden hearts, I'm painting them with my folk art paint in the color imperial. Then it was time to start putting everything together. I'm doing the word hugs on the very top right hand side of my faux book. Then the center one, I'm doing all three hearts. And then on the very bottom, I'm doing the word kisses. I'm getting them all arranged exactly how I want them to be before I start hot gluing each one of my letters and my hearts down. Next, I'm adding some of this a really pretty Valentine's Day trim. It's basically just string with wooden hearts and beads on it. I'm attaching it on the left side of my books. I'm just wrapping it around like three times. You can see me here. I'm hot gluing the very end of the string on the bottom of my books. That was a huge mistake. I should have done it on the back of the faux books instead of the bottom because when I'm gluing it on the bottom, it's raising it up a little bit on the bottom, so it's not going to sit flat when I place it on a table. So what I ended up having to do is just use like one of those little furniture um, like padding things that you put on the end of a chair. I placed one of those on the other side of the bottom of my books, and then they sat flat. But just keep that in mind that you want to use the hot glue on the back of the books and not the bottom. Then for the last step, I just added a small piece of greenery to the top of my books. Here are my books all finished. I love how these turned out. Another super easy, budget-friendly project. And this one goes a little bit better with my decor than the ones that came from Dollar Tree. Now moving right on into DIY number three. For this one, I'm using one of these unfinished wood frame pieces from Hobby Lobby. This one is in the size five by seven. And the first thing I'm gonna be doing to this one is using my folk art wood tint in the color Walnut. I do like to apply it with a small paintbrush so that I can get it in all of the wood grooves. And then once I have it painted on, and then I just use an old rag to wipe away the excess. Once that was all dry, I'm then using some painter's tape and I'm placing the tape at the very top of my frame and then I'm placing another piece of tape directly underneath my first piece of tape and then a third piece of tape directly underneath my second piece of tape. I then went back and removed the second piece of tape and now it's all ready for me to start painting. For the two open spaces, I'm using the color Prominent Pink from Folk Art and I did do two different coats of this paint just so that everything was covered really nicely. Once the paint dried, I then removed the two pieces of painter's tape and then I used two new pieces of painter's tape to apply over the prominent pink colors that I just painted on. I'm using tape over these so that I don't mess up the colors that I've already painted on. So then the next color that I'm going to be doing in the two open spaces is also from Folk Art and it's in the color Vintage Victorian. And this is just a really nice pastel pink color. Then once that paint has dried, I'm removing all of my tape. Then I wanted to add a little bit of detail in between all of the stripes that I just painted on. So I'm using a really small paintbrush with my Waverly paint in the color plaster. And I'm just painting on these white colored lines in between all of the stripes. My lines that I'm painting on are not perfect, but I think it looks a little bit more rustic this way. I did want this piece to have a little bit more of a rustic look. So I did end up taking some more of that plaster color on a Dollar Tree stencil brush and I just dry brush that color randomly all over those pink stripes that I painted in the back and I think that this toned those colors down a little bit and gave this more of a rustic romantic feel. For this project, I'm also using some wood letters. I'm using two X's and two O's for XOXO. And these ones, I believe, are from Joanne Fabrics. And for all of the letters, I'm painting them with the Waverly paint in plaster. I'm then attaching all of my letters on the bottom right hand side of my sign. And I did them saying XOXO. And to attach them, I used hot glue on the back side. Next, I thought it would be cute to add some jute to the top of the sign, so I'm using two strands of the jute and I placed hot glue on the ends of the strands and then just stuck them to the second stripe. I'm then going to be using some of these white felt hearts from Dollar Tree and pressing them over top of the jute. And I'm having the jute go in kind of like a half moon shape across the left top hand side of my sign. And I am going to be using four of 
these felt stickers. I just I cut the jute down to size, like I said, so that I could have it going in like a half moon shape at the very top left hand side. And then every so often I would place the felt sticker with a little bit of jute space in between each one. I hope that made sense. The felt stickers were really thin and see-through, so I ended up going back through and adding a second one over top, but this time I left the paper backing on the heart instead of peeling it off, and I just hot glued that right over top of the first heart that I've already attached, just so that they would look a little bit thicker and not as thin, and I ended up loving the way that it looked when it was all finished. I, again, super easy, budget friendly, and it is just a, such a great piece to add for your tabletop decor this Valentine's Day. Now for DIY number four. For this one, I'm using this like paper cardboard like mailbox from Hobby Lobby. It was in the Valentine's Day section this year. And the first thing I'm going to be doing to it is painting the outside of it with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. I did do two coats of this paint. Then for the flag part of my mailbox, I painted that with my folk art paint in the color Vintage Victorian. I did have to do two coats of paint to get everything all covered up. And then I did go back through and end up painting the lid or front of my mailbox with that same vintage Victorian color. I just thought it would be really cute to have it the same color as my flag. For this project, I'm also using these wooden letters to spell out the word mail. These ones are from Joanne Fabrics, and I'm going to be painting all of the letters with my rich black paint from Folk Art. I'm also using these three unfinished wooden hearts from Dollar Tree, and for all three of these, I'm painting them with the Waverly paint in plaster. I'm then placing all of my letters to spell out the word mail on the very front lid of my mailbox, and then all three of my wooden hearts above my word mail. Once I have them all centered and placed where I want them to be, I'm using some hot glue on the back side of the letters and the hearts to attach them to the very front lid of my mailbox. Next, I'm adding some details to the front of my mailbox. I'm stringing a piece of jute around the very front lid right above the word mail and below my wooden hearts. I strung it across the lid and then on the inside of the lid, I just hot glued the two ends of my jute down and then just cut off any excess jute that was left over. Next, I'm adding some of this white like ribbon trim. This is from the Target Dollar Sprout that I got a couple years ago, but I thought it would be really cute on this piece. I'm attaching it above the jute that I just added and to attach it, again, I'm using the hot glue. I'm just doing the same thing. I wrapped it around the front of the mailbox lid and then attached it to the very inside of the lid. Then I'm adding a second piece of jute right over top of that white trim that I just added doing the same steps, just attaching it to the very inside of my lid and then just cutting off any of the excess jute. I recently found these really cute flowers at Hobby Lobby and I thought they would be perfect to add to the center of all three of my hearts on my mailbox. So I just cut the stems off of them and then I'm attaching all three of these pink little flowers right in the center of my hearts using some hot glue. Next, I'm using this Love Stencil. I've had this for a while. It came in a pack of stencils from Michaels. So I'm just peeling it off and then I'm attaching it to the very center of the side of my mailbox. Once I have it all on, I'm then gonna be using my rich black paint color from Folk Art and I'm painting that only over the word love. Then for the heart on the stencil and then all of the stems on the side, I'm using my Folk Art paint in the color Vintage Victorian. After the paint was all dry, I then removed the stencil from the side of my mailbox. Then I, of course I wanted to add even more detail, so I'm using some of these small greenery pieces that I had in my stash, and I'm using some hot glue to attach two of them going along the very top rim of my mailbox lid. And then attaching another one of these small pink flowers to my mailbox flag, and then I thought it would be super cute to add some of these little lips from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna be using four of them for this project and I did remove the stickers that were on the backs of all of the lips and I'm painting 
all four of my lips with my vintage Victorian paint color. At first I was just going to do three of the lips, but you'll see at the end I did end up adding a fourth one. Once the paint was dry, I added one lip to the side of the mailbox with the flag, and then I did a couple of them one on the top of the word love on the left hand side one on the bottom on the right hand side and then this is where i ended up adding a fourth one i thought it just looked kind of too plain above the word love on the right hand side so this is where i added the fourth one and here is my valentine mailbox all finished i absolutely love how this one turned out this one is still budget friendly even though it does have a lot of steps to create this piece but i definitely think it's worth it in the end now for the fifth and final DIY today. For this one, I'm using this wooden frame from Hobby Lobby. This is a five by seven, just like the other one that I used in a different DIY in today's video. I'm doing the same thing. I'm painting on my folk art wood tint in the color walnut. And then once I have it painted on, I'm just removing the excess with an old rag. And I did also stain the backside of this. Then for the inside of this piece, I'm painting it with a Waverly paint in the color plaster and I just did one paint on the inside. Once that was drying, I went ahead and started getting all of my letters ready. I am using letters A through Z except for an O. I am going to be using this small wooden heart instead of the letter O. For all of my letters besides the letters I in U and then my heart, I'm going to be painting all of the other letters with the folk art paint in the color rich black. Then for the letters I, the heart that I'm using, and the letter U, I'm painting all of those with my folk art paint in the color imperial. After the paint was all dry, I then started placing all of my letters on my wood frame. For the first line, I did the letters A through E. Then for the second line underneath those, I did the letters F through J. Then for the third line, I did the letters K through P. Then for the fourth line, I did the letters Q through U. And then I did the letters V through Z on the very last line. Once I had them all centered and the way I wanted them to be, I hot glued each one of the letters down onto my frame. And this is my alphabet I love you Valentine's picture all finished. This one was inspired by a piece that I did see at Hobby Lobby this year and I knew that I could recreate it. And that wraps it up for all 13 of my projects. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, I hope that you will consider subscribing. And please be sure to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And as always, thank you so much for watching.